for the floor will be yours and will not be recorded. So before we start, we have some common rules. Um, so first, be sure that your name is clearly uh, can be clearly read with your pronouns if you'd like. Uh, yeah, again, make sure you're, that you're muted um, if you're not speaking. Uh, when you'd like to speak, just raise your hand and you have the, the chat where you can ask questions, make comments, and we'll make sure that we read them and we share. Um, and yeah, obviously be respectful. Um, so just that you know a bit about us, this is an ECOP event, so an early career ocean professional event organized by the European Marine Board, EMB. And this is our fifth edition. So you might have heard of us by now, but anyways, European Marine Board is at the interface of the sci of marine sciences and policies. And you can find all our science briefs and our policy recommendations on our website. We also have artists in residence that are doing super cool projects that you can check out. And this event is organized by the EMB Young Ambassadors. It's a really cool position, and I really encourage you to check it out. The applications for the next um, mandate will open in February, so you can apply as well. Um, but we are here for the ECOP network, and our goal for this network is to organize open discussions like this for us early career ocean professionals. Um, and we have a big event coming up next week so you can stay tuned we'll organize a networking session um, among us but also with policy and science professionals so be sure that you you follow us it'll happen in 2023 at the eurocean conference and finally you can also register to the emb newsletters um, the emb is really doing a good job at highlighting all the opportunities for us the jobs the fundings the training for early career of ocean professionals so you can check out the newsletter and if you want to collaborate with us you can just reach out to us we'd love it. we'd love it but now today <laughs> we first hear about uh, susanna's Susanna, Susanna Picasma uh, Beth, and I know I'm biased, but I think you're one of the best person to talk about, to chat about our, our topic today. That is, what can we do other than being a researcher inside and outside of academia? Susanna, you had like six lives, at least. <laughs> Uh, you did a PhD in evolutionary ecology, then you switched to bureaucracy to advise policies for fisheries, but not only. Then you came back to the world of research, but you did it your own way. You run a research center, you work on internationalization of young researchers, you work on fundings, on communication. You did everything. <laughs> And you are now at the University of Bergen. You are advising researchers for their application for EU fundings. So I'm pretty sure you will tell us more about all of this and give us some great advice. So the floor is all yours. Thank you. Um, Paula, will you put on the slides? <laughs> Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Um, hello, everybody. Many thanks for the invitation. It was my fabulous mentee, EMB Young Ambassador Juliette, who persuaded me to take this task. Um, Juliette and uh, me, we have been meeting online since last summer, and I think it's uh, mutually rewarding and interesting. And Juliette asked me to uh, talk about my, my career to you, early uh, career ocean professionals. So today I will tell you how you can use your PhD without being an academic. Uh, after all, most of you, you likely uh, will end up outside the academic bubble or get a non-academic position inside the bubble like I have. Next one, please. Um, right, so who am I? Um, my identity, it is a kind of science bureaucrat and Nordic trotter. 
I um, work as a research advisor uh, at the Faculty of Medicine, University of Bergen, Norway. And my educational background is a PhD in biology from University of Helsinki, Finland. Um, as research advisor, uh, my task is to help our researchers to craft the winning proposals. And this means many things. I inform them about the funding opportunities, both national and international, very much EU in these days. Uh, I work on positioning and mobilizing our researchers. I provide hands-on help with concrete project proposals. Currently, I'm working closely with one European Research Council consolidator grant applicant, one uh, European Research Council advanced grant applicant, and with the one um, EU Research and Innovation Action Project Consortium. Work with the proposals, it, it is long-term work. Deadlines for all these proposals are in 2023. Um, being a research advisor, uh, the job is not necessarily about um, knowledge about the scientific domain, although it of course helps. Uh, it's uh, it's to to large extent um, about the system, the processes, about connecting people, running processes, communicating, even lobbying. And it's like research in the sense that you have to constantly seek and find new information and apply that to your daily work. Um, I work very closely with the scientists, scientists, which is demanding and rewarding, but also with economists and other advisors. And this kind of position fits perfectly well for a person who has uh, two driving forces, uh, curiosity and uh, will to help, uh, because working with science and research, it is um, essentially, or it feeds my curiosity, and uh, my task is essentially to help help other people. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, this one. Um, before joining the Faculty of Medicine last spring, I worked at the Department of Biological Sciences here at the University of Bergen. And this is my connection to European Marine Board because one of my projects connects to European Marine Board. Um, so I worked with um, several marine projects. One of them was Norwegian Marine University Consortium, which is a collaboration between Norwegian universities with marine and maritime profile. And it represents at the universities in European Marine Board. Um, furthermore, I worked uh, with the Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Project Sponges, or Deep Sea Sponge Grants Ecosystems of the North Atlantic, an integrated approach towards the preservation and sustainable exploitation. This uh, project ran between uh, 2016 and 2020, and um, my role was the, um, um, I was the scientific project manager for the project during the last two years of its uh, lifetime. Uh, that was pretty much the corona time and, and a bit more. This was a large project uh, with uh, over 20 partners and a budget um, of about 20, 10 million euro. And um, they were very productive, more than 100 publications um, were produced within the project. Furthermore, I worked with um, the Norwegian node of EMBRC, European Marine Biological Resource Center, which is an ERIC or a European Research Infrastructure Com Consortium. The seven Norwegian partners provided uh, diverse infrastructures to, to this um, to this node from model organisms and cultural facilities to marine biological stations. One of the challenges in my work was that uh, the pandemic seriously hampered the possibilities of offering transnational access to the infrastructures. Scientists couldn't travel to other countries to visit the infrastructures because of um, travel restrictions. But um, that's um, um, 
lucky, luckily that time, that time is over. And I was also involved in, in the Plastics Network, which is an interdisciplinary network here at the university. It's for people who work with um, plastics and plastic pollution, in particular in the marine ecosystem. So this was a bunch of uh, very diverse marine projects. Uh, uh, all of them involved uh, broad collaboration with uh, dedicated colleagues, both um, um, at the university, across the university, elsewhere in Norway, and also internationally. Next slide, please. <laughs> yeah, this is a pause screen. Um, I have told you about my work at the University of Bergen, but now we got a bit back in time. Um, next one. To be honest, I never had a master plan, neither for my private life nor for my professional life. I have had and I still have goals. Some of them I have achieved and some of them I'm working on. For instance, uh, to get a PhD was one of my earlier goals. <laughs> Last week and I looked for my diploma and in fact, uh, it's not very impressive. It's a piece of a uh, gray paper with some attachments. But of course, it's an important document and it took uh, three years of intense work to complete it. But uh, career-wise or planning-wise, this is definitely not the way I would recommend other people to do it. I strongly support planning. Next one, please. And in fact, today, um, there's more focus on career planning in the academia, and there are many initiatives to support young scientists. For instance, our faculty asks all new postdocs to support our career development plan within the first three months of their employment. Uh, this plan should be created in collaboration with a supervisor or line manager. And why is that? Well, because career planning tools, they can help you to assess your current skills and competencies, set goals for your professional development and plan and implement uh, specific steps to achieve these goals. And improving, or yeah, working on your career development will help you to stay competitive when it's time to seek promotion or apply for a new opportunity. And this plan can help you to achieve both short-term and long-term goals. Um, next one. So it can simply be a very useful tool. tool. Uh, it can help you to take a structured approach. Should I do at each, uh, each career sta stage? What should I achieve to be able to progress to next uh, stage? Um, what kind of um, research achieve achievements should I um, achieve? Um, um, in the early stages of my career as postdoc uh, further on during early career? Or also, which uh, skills should I acquire to get my dream job? What is needed? What is useful? For instance, in the industry or in a specific company, in a specific organization, or in the academia. Next one, please. Another post screen. Uh, so obviously I didn't do that. So we go back in time. Next one, please. Um, these pictures illustrate my PhD project. I worked with uh, salmonid fishes and I did experimental wor work both in the field and in the lab. Uh, the title of my PhD thesis was Mobile and Early Life History Variation in Freshwater Salmonids. I was part of a large group, part of the team, the wet boot section worked with fish and the other part of the team were modelers and theoreticians who ran some simulations on that computer day and night. Um, so this was at the University of Helsinki. Uh, next one, please. Uh, for my postdoc, I moved to Sweden and continued with uh, fundamental evolutionary ecology questions. I worked with amphibians. Uh, they are neat model system. If you want to do experimental work, if you want to do, want to do quantitative genetics, they are also interesting in the sense that the juvenile stages they are expo exposed to many environmental stressors, and they can be used as indicator species. And uh, they are interesting for biodiver biodiversity because globally many amphibian populations have decreased in numbers. So 
what I worked on, I studied the effect of different environmental environmental stressors on life history related traits. I was part of a quite large group at a vibrant department, a very good learning environment um, at Uppsala University, Sweden. But my last field season, it was a total catastrophe. And then it was quite easy to move, move on and leave the academia. Next one, please. Uh, these are the logos of my working place, places. Um, so in these days, I'm a science bureaucrat. Earlier, I have been an environmental bureaucrat, even educational bureaucrat, even earlier, evolutionary biologist, aquatic ecologist, fish biologist, a, dep a bit depending on the context or the task. And I have worked at um, research organizations, governmental agencies, research council, um, universities in Sweden at uh, Swedish Board of Fisheries, Swedish Research Council Forumus, Swedish Agency for Marine and Water Management, Swedish Environmental Pro Protection Agency. In Denmark at Aarhus University, in different positions at faculty department and center of excellence level. And now I am in Norway at University of Bergen. I have had uh, diverse uh, work titles uh, um, or job titles like researcher, executive officer, senior research officer, PhD coordinator, international coordinator, center manager, advisor, you name it. Um, next one, please. I want to highlight one specific um, working place uh, where I was uh, before moving to Norway, and that was the Swedish Environmental Prote Protection Agency. Um, the Swedish EPA, it was the first of its kind when it was established in 1967, more than 50 years ago. And uh, it's the governmental agency uh, which conducts and coordinates Sweden's environmental work. Together with many other actors, um, they work to preserve biodiversity, reduce climate impact and contribute to a resource efficient society. So the Swedish EPA has a really broad working area. For instance, national parks, uh, outdoor life, climate issues, waste issues, international agreements, and so on. And that means that there are a lot of different competencies and many skilled people, and very many actually with a PhD. And um, working at a central environmental authority, it is essentially a vantage point to environmental work. Um, and that makes it very, very interesting. My own work was connected to Sweden's environmental quality objectives, which is the left um, left hand side of this uh, slide, uh, um, illustrating the 16 environmental quality objectives. And one of the concrete uh, tasks I worked with was the report on the right hand side, um, which is an in-depth evaluation of the environmental quality objectives, um, how the work to reach uh, the objectives is progressing. And uh, this was um, work in close collaborate, collaboration with other actors in the environmental, um, environmental sector. So all in all, a uh, very interesting, um, challenging working place, um, basically, being in a big working place, it uh, it has uh, several advantages. Uh, you have the critical mass, and you have a, a number of skilled colleagues, and there may be also career-wise internal opportunities, and many other advantages. Well, um, of course, um, obviously also some disadvantages related to the size. Uh, you may not know what happens at the, on the other side of the organization because it's so far away. But yeah, um, the, so being an environmental bureaucrat, I, I um, find it very interesting, found it very interesting. The downside is that despite many efforts, the progress in environmental work is, it is slow. And in many areas, the development goes in wrong direction. Many of you probably heard um, the depressing news from the uh, news to Living Planet report uh, by the World um, Wildlife Fund. Um, wildlife populations 
plummets by 69%, like more than two thirds since 1970. So um, that's kind of very, very sad. Um, next one, please. Um, right, so some, <laughs> some messages, <laughs> some questions, what I wish I had known uh, a bit earlier in my career or what I wish I had uh, done a bit differently um, a bit earlier in my career. Um, I, I realized that some more strateg strategic thinking uh, during the studies uh, would have been useful. Um, which uh, skills uh, uh, will I need? My degree, it was only biology. Um, later on, I have taken a number of courses, for instance, um, environmental law and communication and writing, and that has of, co of course been useful, but I could have acquired those skills a bit earlier on. On the other hand, you kind of never know what you will need uh, in the future. Um, I started my university studies, not with biology, but with a Nordic uh, philology, never graduated from that side. Uh, but later on, it's been very useful when I've been moving around the Nordic countries to have the linguistic base. Um, lessons learned, or lessons that can be learned. Um, networking is very useful. This is a message that is often repeated and it's so very true. I, I take advantage from contacts and networks I've developed um, in my day, yeah, uh, throughout my career in my daily work. Another thing is that you can learn something from all your jobs and all the places where you work, you acquire new skills and you use them. Um, and if I <laughs> should just tell some take home messages, to, to you, early career ocean professionals, um, there are, for instance, there are a lot of interesting opportunities out there, and new opportunities will, will appear. Um, positions like my current job did not exist when I was a student, and uh, the same development will most likely continue, like your future job isn't there yet, it will appear sometime in the future. And if, um, if you're a PhD student and struggle with your project, um, I think it's important for you to know that a PhD degree, it is useful. You become an expert in something, you learn a lot of other skills. And also in some contexts, it gives you credibility and respect. And <laughs> this is, a bit more on the funny side, but like if you book a travel and you're supposed to indicate your title, I think <laughs> indicate your title. I think it's great fun to uh, uh, tick the box doctor instead of Mrs. So yeah, minor adv advantage, but still a bit fun. Right, next one, please. Yeah. <laughs> this was actually for about the last one regarding lessons learned. If you enjoy what you are doing, you will perform better and you will be happier. Um, so now I'm approaching the end of my presentation. And with this picture, I want to say several things. First of all, you will all encounter obstacles or put it the other way around. There are new challenges and new opportunities ahead. Take them. And Second, it's important to have other things in your life than only science, only work. Um, you may not be able to have a fantastic career, a fantastic family, fancy hobbies, a super social life at the same time, but make sure that you have something else than work to think about. Something that brings pleasure, something that relaxes your mind or challenges your body, whatever you prefer. And it's also good to have social relations outside your work, whether it's family, friends, partner, pet, or another important person. It's good to have somebody to share, share your joys and successes with, and somebody who supports and comforts when you need that. All this is very self-evident. Nevertheless, it's very important. Yeah, 
maybe the third message from, from this picture is that I love the great outdoors. Next one, please. Um, <laughs> so this is some promotion of my current country of residence. We used to work in Norway. Check this website. Um, Norway not only has the longest coastline in Europe, and it's an important gateway to the Arctic, but all the country also has the highest proportion of marine scientists per inhabitant in the world. The population is 5.5 million people. So I checked the website last week and the search word marine, there were 25 vacant positions. So, and this is not only for uh, um, uh, positions in the academia, it's uh, um, research institutions elsewhere. So maybe worth checking at some point. Next one. So thank you for your attention and uh, feel free to reach out. This is my email and my LinkedIn profile. Thank you.